All right, what's going on guys? So I've got a video I wanted to make talking about a property that I sold and part of me regrets it, part of me doesn't, but I wanna tell you the story about the property and kind of my thoughts now. Uh, if you guys don't realize there's such a thing as appreciation, so that's one of the beautiful things about owning real estate is it's going up in value pretty much all the time. Rarely do you ever see real estate going down uh, and maybe if it is, it's maybe in a market that's not uh, growing anymore. Maybe a lot of people are leaving that area. Maybe it's heavily taxed. Maybe there's a lot of crime, things like that. But most, most property in general is going up over time, just like the value of, um, you know, common goods are going up. You know, the price of milk is not going down. It's appreciating in value. So there's a lot more economics that go on with that uh, that I'm not smart enough to explain. But... Guys, I had this duplex that I want to show you. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump in here to my uh, computer. We're going to make sure that you guys can see this. So um, this is a duplex that I bought in St. Louis, Missouri, and I bought it. I don't actually remember. I should have pulled up the statement. I'm going to guess um, 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. And I made videos about this one in the past. But um, here you see that the airport's right here. The arch is um, somewhere down to the right. And we're gonna zoom in here and we're gonna find it. And I know that the sales data is now missing, which I don't know why. I looked at it, um, this is months back, and I saw what it sold for. So I've got, got a pretty good idea what it sold for here. So the one that I owned, oops, was right here. Actually, I own two on this street. I own that one and I own that one, but we're gonna focus on this one today. Um, it was a brick duplex and we'll pull some pictures up here, but I bought it um, for $40,000. Um, and at the time I had like sold a couple of properties and ended up purchasing it for cash. And I don't even remember all the details that went on with the financing, but um, as you'll see on the settlement statement here in a minute, you'll see that I received a lot of cash back at closing. Well, that's because I didn't have financing on it, which um, I wouldn't do that anymore, but the situation I was in back then, that's how it worked. So um, I fixed this thing up, and I'm gonna pull some pictures up here of this duplex, and we're gonna look, um, well, I've got all kinds of different pictures on here. We're gonna look at some of these pictures, and uh, and you'll see the condition it was when I bought it. I mean, it was, it was pretty rough. Um, it needed pretty much everything. Um, I just want to make sure you guys can see this. Oops, not quick time. Um, let's make sure I'm out of the way. I need to shrink myself down a little bit. Still learning how to use this whole system. So uh, that, that bathroom was thankfully already remodeled. Um, you can see it has nice hardwood floors and uh, it wasn't gonna be too big of a deal to refinish those. Uh, you can see hardwood floors out in the living room. So this, this unit was even worse. This unit, all the hardwood floors had been soaked. Um, the tenant had actually, from the previous owner, had stopped up the bathtub and then let it overflow for, um, I don't know, he claims it was a couple of weeks, and then it sat there for months without him knowing. So it just all buckled up and you know got moldy and disgusting. So this thing was a full, pretty much gut job. The furnace was shot, it was all rusty. This was down in the basement, drywall, you know, coming off the walls. Just a disgusting, disgusting building. And so this was back when I had a lot more energy and a lot more time. Um, and I actually went in there and fixed all this up pretty much by myself, by hand. Um, and, well, here's a little walkthrough video. I don't know if this is... Yeah, I don't really want to watch that here. But... I pretty much went in there and had to scrape every single uh, surface, see how this is all peeling off. I just scraped that off with a, um, like a, a, a drywall knife, a mudding knife, get up in there. Took me forever. And then we'll show you some of the progress. So here's the actual uh, duplex right here, solid, solid duplex. You know decent area right across the airport and uh, and I have a million photos here but I start to fix it up you can see I'm starting to do some work getting the kitchen ready 
um, oh, this was something in the attic. The squirrels were living in the attic and they were chewing through the wire. And so I had to have an electrician go up there and replace the wiring, which I was so cheap back then. I was like, ah, oh, maybe I should just leave it. No, I couldn't leave it because that was a huge liability. So the hardwood floors, I was super impressed. I mean, they looked pretty rough, um, but I was able to hire someone. That's one of the things I did hire out to come in here with a sander. And you see how you know pretty that looks after after you sanded it. it looks so good. Um, underneath the stairs, there was this dead space, so I cut cut a hole in, and I actually and ended up putting a doorway in there. Here's the um, hardwood floor after we were putting a layer of polyurethane on it, pulling out. So here's some of the mold that I found, and it was it was terrible. We had to rip it all out, replace it all. Oh, the joys. Ended up replacing all the windows on this thing. But the point of this video is I want to talk about I sold the property to someone, and then they went around and flipped it a year later and just the power of appreciation and the market the way it is how much money they made versus how much money i made so here's a few photos of the basement i painted the walls got it you know all cleaned up um you know got it fresh and clean put a new furnace new water heater in so it turned out turned out pretty good and then Eventually, I have some after photos. Here, I actually have a little time lapse of me painting, painting the place. You know, it's just the basement, so I wanted to seal everything up, make it fresh and clean. My intention was to hold this thing for a long time as a rental, but I ended up uh, selling it. Oh, guys, comment below if you've seen or talk or heard me talk about this situation here. I'm not going to mention it now, but if you know, drop a comment below and we'll maybe address that again another time. So here's the after photos. Looks a lot better. Laid a vinyl in the uh, kitchen. Bathroom looks great. Really clean rental. There's the basement. Um, I was doing some tree trimming up on the roof. The squirrels were jumping up on this roof and getting into the attic, and it was not good. At one point in time, I thought about painting something. I forget what. Not that. Not the house. I wasn't going to paint the house. So I ended up moving away. Uh, we had a sewer back up. That was fun. Look, this whole, whole basement was full of sewage. So we had to auger out, auger out the line, send a camera down, figure out what was going on. Man, I've... I've had some crazy situations. So that's that's pretty much all I'm going to show you on the rehab side. Uh, one more thing I'll talk about before I sum, summarize this video and, and, may, and talk about the price. Um, so when I went back to refinish the drywall, I found it was the fastest to roll on the drywall mud. And then so I rolled it on. You can see all over. Uh, but before it before it would dry, I would then take a um, drywall knife like here and I would smooth this all out. So I did that, let it dry, and then I, I sanded this down, and then um, I, I did one more coat and got it like smooth as it could, and then I actually sprayed texture over it, so. So let's go back to Zillow now, and so I, I ended up selling this thing. Let's pull, let's pull up that um, settlement statement, wherever that went. So here's a settlement statement. You can see I sold it for 102,000. I had, um, if I remember right, somewhere around 70,000 into it after I fixed it up. And then I did hold it for a few years. I think I sold this in 2020. So I, I mean, I held it for like at least three, four years, rent it out. So I made cash back. I, I you know, made money um, by holding it, you know, from the rent coming in. And then I sold it for 102. So let's just call it around a $30,000 gain. Well, I did all that work, and then, you know, this was my fault for not really looking what the market was doing. I didn't ask enough for it. I should have. I should have asked a lot more because the guy who ended up buying it ended up uh, selling it like a, 
it wasn't even a year later for like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars and the market was kind of going crazy about that time like all real estate in that area was just really going like this so if i would have held on to it i could have potentially sold it for another 30 grand a year later and so that's kind of my point with this video is uh sometimes it it, it pays to hold real estate long term don't sell it because you're going to be making money on that appreciation but also do your market research and find out really what the thing's worth because i clearly didn't ask enough i should have should have been asking more but um you know props to that guy he made made quick money and um you know he was able to to flip that into something else i assume and um one other thing i just you know I, do I regret selling it a little bit, but not really because that cash then I was able that that hundred grand that I got at closing, um, I was able to go put that down onto a larger property. And then what I do, then I was able to flip that into a larger one and a larger one. So I feel like when you're younger, uh, if I could go back and do things over again, I would not try to hold real estate um, at, the, at the young age. Like I'm still in my 20s. I would tell myself in my 20s, Focus on snowballing your your cash, you know, grow it, grow it, grow it. Don't focus so much on buying long-term cash flowing assets. Wait until you're a little bit older because you need money to work with right now. So, you know, if you can buy this duplex for 40 grand, put 30 into it, you know, you're all in 70 and you can flip it for 30 grand, I would, sit, I would still say do it because then that 30 grand can be used for another one and then just keep leveraging yourself up and then you know it gets easier and easier the bigger you get so anyways do i regret selling it eh, not really it was a good property but i've really grown a lot since then i've really um scaled up my game in 2022 let me tell you it's gonna be a big year so stay tuned but that's it guys i uh, appreciate you guys watching as always and until next time, first of all, don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe if you haven't. But anyways, guys, we'll see you later. Thanks.